Here we'll learn how transport vesicles form and fuse with their target membranes. To begin, start a table to list the key steps that are common to all transport vesicles. Denote the following steps. Cargo selection, which is the carefully regulated incorporation of cargo into a vesicle. Vesicular budding, which involves deformation of the hydrophobic membrane bilayer, allowing the vesicle to break off the membrane. Vesicular targeting and fusion, which is highly regulated just like cargo selection. We'll illustrate the specialized proteins and receptors that facilitate these steps. To begin, let's illustrate step one, cargo selection. First draw a phospholipid bilayer as two lines bending inwards. Label the bilayer donor membrane. Now donor lumen above it and the cytoplasm below it. Next, draw cargo receptors on the curved portion of the membrane. Show that they bind soluble cargo. They specifically bind the signal sequences of secretory proteins that are sorted for export from the donor compartment. Next, draw adapter proteins that bind to the cytoplasmic side of the cargo receptors. Write that adapter proteins maintain the following functions. They help filter the cargo that binds cargo receptors. They function as an interface for coat formation, which we'll illustrate shortly. Cargo selection is highly regulated to ensure that only the correct cargo gets transported. Now let's assemble our vesicular coat. Show that coat proteins bind to the adapter proteins, which are in turn bound to the cargo receptors. This creates a protein scaffold on the cytoplasmic side of the membrane, a structure that bends the donor membrane and stabilizes the resulting curvature. Write that coat proteins sculpt the membrane to facilitate vesicular budding and that they also help select for correct cargo. Specific coat proteins refer to specific vesicular transport pathways within the cell. Let's introduce these different coat proteins before we move on. Start a chart to learn the different kinds of coat proteins, their membranes of origin, and the destinations of the vesicles that they help shape. Indicate that clathrin proteins originate in the Golgi and are involved in vesicular transport to lysosomes. Indicate that these clathrin proteins are specifically paired with adaptin-1 adapter proteins. Adapter proteins are often considered inner coat proteins. Write that clathrin proteins paired with adaptin-2 originate in the plasma membrane and are involved in vesicular transport to endosomes. Now indicate that COP1 protein, COP1 proteins, originate in the cis-Golgi and are involved in transport to the ER. Write that they also facilitate transport from later cisternal stacks in the Golgi to earlier ones. Finally, indicate that COP2 protein, COP2 proteins, originate in the ER and facilitate transport to the cis-Golgi. Now that we've introduced the diversity of coat proteins within the cell, let's illustrate step two of vesicular formation, vesicular budding. Extend the donor membrane to illustrate this step, but this time with a more dramatic inward bulge. Again, draw cargo in the lumen and cargo receptors that bind a membrane scaffold on their cytoplasmic side. Now draw an additional protein that spirals around the neck of the budding vesicle and label it dynamin. Write that dynamin family proteins are GTPases, which hydrolyze GTP to GDP. Indicate via fission, dynamin and associated proteins twist the neck of the vesicle in a GTP-dependent manner, which pinches off the vesicle from the donor membrane. Now draw the vesicle suspended in the cytoplasm. Below it, draw a naked transport vesicle that has shed its coat and adapter proteins. These external proteins dissociate from the vesicular membrane after fission occurs. Label this step uncoating, during which the adapter and coat proteins that dissociate get recycled via the retrieval pathway and return to the donor compartment. This brings us to our final phase, vesicular targeting and fusion. 
wherein the vesicle targets a membrane and fuses with it. First, our vesicle must recognize its target. Draw a target membrane bending outward and label the target lumen. Now in the cytoplasm, draw a simplified naked vesicle with cargo. This time include the following proteins in the vesicular membrane. Rab GTPase, which also hydrolyzes GTP like the Dynamin family. V-snare protein. The V stands for vesicle and will bind a complementary T-snare on the target membrane. Write that the Rab GTPase facilitates the transport of the vesicle to its appropriate target membrane. It does this by associating with cytoskeletal motors. Write that it also helps the vesicle dock at the correct target membrane. Lends specificity to the transport vesicle. Different Rab GTPases correspond to different target membranes. Participates in the fusion of the vesicular and target membranes. We'll illustrate the function of these snare protein shortly. Now on the target membrane, draw a filamentous tethering protein. Next to it, draw a T-snare. Show the tethering step as follows. Show that the Rab GTPase on our vesicle binds to the tethering protein and moves closer to the target membrane. Both of these proteins must match in order for this step to proceed. Finally, indicate that the tethering protein and Rab GTPase match thus allowing the vesicle to enter the docking phase. If they do not match, the vesicle dissociates and Rab GTPase continues the search for its correct destination. Show the docking step as follows. Draw another vesicle even closer to the target membrane and illustrate the following protein interactions. Rab GTPase remains bound to the tethering protein. The V-snare binds the membrane-bound T-snare tightly. Show that the tight binding of snare proteins facilitates the final step, which is fusion. Show that cargo dissociates from the cargo receptor. Thus, cargo is finally delivered to the target organelle via fusion. As a clinical correlation, denote that the tetanus toxin, released by bacteria known as Clostridium tetani, cleaves a snare protein in nerve cells. This prevents the fusion of synaptic vesicles and, as a result, the release of neurotransmitters, which produces muscular spasming. This concludes our diagram.